Here we go. Back to go. All right, I'll call the meeting to order at 5.11 on Tuesday, July 16th. Um, everyone, let's do the Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We are going to start with the folks online. So, Phyllis. Oh, Hello, Phyllis. Uh, Kristen. Here. Hello, Kristen. All right. Carrie. Here. All right. Barb. Here. Tracy. Here. Michelle. Here. Right. Alderman Decker. Here. Dave? Here. All right, we have a quorum. Ah, statement of public notice. This meeting was noticed in accordance with the open meeting law. All right, public comment. I don't see anybody here or online. Um, consent agenda. Can we get a motion to approve the minutes from last month's meeting, June 18, 2024, and the June 2024 financials? I move to approve. Thank right. you. I'll Barry. second. Thank you, Bar. Discussion. Any questions, comments, concerns? On page seven, about the middle of the page, it says filtration concepts incorporated. I'm curious what that was. I believe that has to do with our plumbing. These were maintenance charges. So I believe George took care of it. He and I haven't talked about this directly, but I would imagine if it was ordered, it was necessary. So to to the for the plumbing so okay and then the other one that I had was on the next page page 8 at the top J.M. Brennan it says A-H-U number 2 making noise yeah it was making a wild noise and like all good noises it sounded like it was something really bad patrons were concerned and complaining and that was an area we had had problems with before and I was really afraid so I called the company and they came out and the noise stopped what age you air I stuck my I, I stuck my head in the ceiling first to see if I could figure it out on a ladder um, and it hasn't come back they flagged it um, so that was a case of me probably calling a bit too early so, um, uh, our maintenance was also on vacation. Otherwise, I would have called them first. So, what were you saying, Tracy? That was the same question. When she gives me the treasurer's report, I was like, what's up with this noise thing? It's kind of costly. <laughs> it, was, it was a very costly noise. My anxiety costs apparently $445.40. Is the new motor capacitor for the same unit? It's not. Oh, it was okay. Different. Different part. Different part okay. of the building. What was okay? So on page eight, same page, mm -hmm. the Promax custom powder coating. What was that powder coating for? That was the safety railing. The uh, oh, and on, on yeah. this month. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yep. It's is that, I thought that was a month or two ago. That's why. I would, Okay. We talked about it. I showed the photo. I was very excited about it, but now it's hidden. Got gotcha. um, it. For a minute. Anybody else have? Discussion points? All right. 
I think we're ready to vote. All those in favor of approving the June 18, 2024 minutes and the June 2024 financials, please say aye. 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 All those against? Thank you, motion passes. Um, the people online, I see them speak, but I don't hear them. They're both muted. They're muted. Okay. Yeah. Okay. As long as they did it. I, I said I. <laughs> I saw them say I. I yeah. like, you I keep saw. you keep driving. Uh, we'll read lips. I'll know if you honk your horn vigorously. That means no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, President's report. I actually have nothing to report on this month. We have no new members, and <laughs> everything seems to be close. <laughs> I, this isn't a report, but I saw Gail at, I knew. at the dollar store in Muskego yeah. a couple weeks ago, and I was like, what are you doing here? Like, <laughs> you out of a dollar store in your new home? And she was buying something for something she's still involved in, so she says hi to everybody is why I'm bringing this up. I knew our nice. former president was Gail. She, it was just funny to run into her because she moved out of Muskego. Yeah. I, I asked her if she was going to run for the Fort Atkinson board, but she said the positions are filled. So, <laughs> yeah. um, But that's nice. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. Sure. Uh, director's report. Brittany, take it away. All right. Um, I'll keep it brief because we've got to get to the budget. I promised Barb. Um, <laughs> So many summer reading signups. It's great. It is really exciting to see all the engaged kids. Um, so that's really great. Garden walk went well. So um, we had over 220 tickets sold. It was rainy. That didn't help us much, but um, it was still a beautiful event. People worked so hard. I'm so grateful to the friends. Cruising right on through. Um, the teen programs have been really well attended. Um, they tend to get all filled up, which is really great. Uh, we created over 200 new library cards in June. Those are new cards, so they're not renewals. So that's really exciting as well. Um, let's see here. I mentioned that Lauren is leaving us to uh, start her librarian career in Grafton. So um, she was such a great addition. We're, we're so excited and happy for her, and we'll miss her. Uh, let's see, August 20th at 5 o'clock is our next board meeting. Do uh, I just want to verbally thank Maria Tess and Judy Steyer. They were the co-chairs of the Garden Walk, so I want to call them out specifically because they start this process they started in February, and even before then, they're looking for gardens. So they put a lot of heart into it and a lot of time, and it's out of a love for the library, and I, I appreciate that. Um, let's see here. I also want to thank the um, DPW department and city IT department. Like As we've been trying to like put together this assessment of the parking lot and its condition. IT was able to fly the drone up that gave us those photos that we looked at last time. Um, and DPW, they're the ones that did the core samples and obviously that saved us money from having to do it elsewhere um, and was able to sort of give us the, a condition report. So I really appreciate those city departments um, assisting me in that way. We're gonna be purchasing some signage this project, oh, it started at the end of the last strategic plan, and we were just waiting because signage needs to be consistent, right? That way people can see the signage versus it looking like we're just tacking up stuff randomly. And so we've gotten to the point where we know what signage design we want, and our different capital projects, the service desk capital project, the restroom capital project, the study room capital project, they all have had money set aside and now we've finished the designs and we're ready to make the purchase um, out of those different budgets. It's going to be really great. Um, we spent over months um, actually watching patrons, not in a creepy way, but in a like, where are they getting confused? Where are they 
they call them bump points, stopping and going, but wait, where are the bathrooms? Things like that. So we're really excited to address some of those issues, which was a charge from our last strategic plan with the signage, so that's exciting. Who installs those? Is the city able to do that? The company to, will. The company that yep. we're buying the signs yep. from? Okay, yep. they're going to come in. Is that where, why you have the green flashy light above the reference desk, though? The green flashy light is us trying to engineer a solution. Um, the, the seats for the reference desk were positioned very specifically because we know that when people approach us, they approach us for assistance in one of two ways. They're either coming because they need help from the copier and computer side or study room side, or they're coming either from the front of the library, from circulation, or from the children's area. So we positioned them. They used to be um, facing the two different walls, which was not helpful, because then you had to rely on your peripherals for those main um, patron service points. It's working really well for those areas, but in the moments when um, someone is not at the children's front area, but there is someone at the tech side, we'll call it, other people approach from the children's or the front of the building, and they don't feel, it, they see the person's back and they don't feel like they can approach. And we don't really want to bell that someone dings on the counter. It's not kind of the vibe. We, we want people, you know, pounding on it. Um, and so we were trying to think, like, who else has already engineered a solution for this? And it's grocery stores, right? Grocery stores, you know, if the light is on, someone will help me. If the light is not on, I should not go to this area. So we bought that glowing cube for, like, you know, 15 bucks, and we stuck it up there, and we're trying to see <laughs> if it highlights that there's someone there and sort of gets them, you know, to, to head over it, to know that they can um, approach that person. So we'll see if the glowing cube works. <laughs> anyway, those were some of the highlights. Um, everything else there, of course, is important, but um, I want to make sure I keep us moving along. So. Randy, does the signage go out to a quote, or like how does that, like who gets that bid, or who gets that? I'm just curious because we have an in-pro in town that does signage that yeah. I'm sure would be happy to give a quote. So we approached in-pro first, and for the signage we were looking for, they actually referred us out. Oh, okay. So, and then we worked with a company, and we didn't like them. Oh. So we left them. And then we went to a different company, and we liked them, and so we went with them. But, yeah, we've, we've used in-pro in the past every now and then for, like, smaller parts, but for the larger design of what we were looking for they the last time we had approached them they'd actually referred us out so um, but we do try to use them when we can because they are a great company and they're a local company so that's my report any other questions Comments? All right, I think we're going to move on. Unfinished <clears throat> business. We have no unfinished business. New business. First item, discussion action. The proposed 2025 library capital budget second <laughs> Who was that? <laughs> um, are we voting to approve this? Do we need a motion? Yeah, we're voting. Really, we're voting to send it on to the mayor and finance so that they can build it into the larger puzzle. So, so. thank you. Can I get a motion to for the vote to approve the cap library ca the 2025 library capital budget and to present it to the mayor and the council? Can I get a motion to? I move to you. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so Kristen will have her be second. second. Carrie can be first. Okay. We follow all second. Oh, uh, Kristen actually oh, popped in, so we're, we're, we're good to go. <laughs> so did you have things you wanted to start with, Brittany? Or Always. Do you guys want to start with comments? Yeah, I think... Um, 
I'll, uh, if, if everyone doesn't mind, I'll just sort of... Packet page 19 is um, our capital budget background document. It's the same as last time. Um, you're going to notice one large change. Uh, and that was before the light poles were, I believe, at zero. And I think I told you that we were still trying to coordinate with the vendor in DPW um, to, to, um, to get that final number. And there is the number. The number is unfortunate. Um, obviously, our first goal was to refinish them, but as you recall, when DPW started taking them down, found they were rotting on the inside, and that it was not um, wise to put any money towards it. Um, it'd be better to put that money towards new light poles. They are, you know, original to the building. They're 24 years old in a four-season state, so um, they, 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 they've served us well. Um, the number that I've given you is the higher end. There were two types of poles that we were looking at. Um, I'm coordinating, coordinating with DPW on this because they are also buying light poles for the city. And our plan is to buy the same type of pole so that when they are doing maintenance and looking for parts, it's a consistent feel. Um, I was talking with them today. There is just a few things left that they wanted to talk about. But for the sake of this meeting, I put the more expensive option in. The slightly cheaper one, which is actually the one I think we're going to go with, so this ne this number could, could drop um, a bit, is about um, $9,000 less. Um, the cheaper one actually has a better warranty, and its parts are more readily available. In terms of them both being LED, they're the same. Uh, the cheaper one is a little bit less ornate than the ones we have now. But to me, um, if they have the same durability, they're both LED, um, but one is cheaper and has a better warranty. And the, we were told that they're really like reliable and good units. To me, that seems like a good solution, provided that there's nothing else from like a maintenance durability perspective that that they haven't uncovered. So I anticipate, hopefully, that this will actually be cheaper than what I have there. Um, what you're seeing is it was a little bit over 100000 and then I called the company and I said, what's the inflation on this because we would be buying it next year? And he said it's pretty across the board. So he floated 10% as a potential. So. Right now, the polls, and keep in mind, we're buying 21 polls. Um, they're at about four, a little over 4,000 apiece, and then the 10% inflation. Um, we do have about $20,000 left in this capital budget after we refurbished the safety railing. That was money we were going to use to refurbish the light poles. And so that is a point that we can bring up to council is either that we're not spending that money and you can roll it over or just know that that money is coming back to you. Um, it, it's not going to be spent, so it's, it's there and available. So that's a little something. It's not great, but it's, it's something. Um, like I said before, this is a tricky project to propose because if you were to ask me, they're all working right now, right? They're not flickering. Um, they're not big patches of darkness. But at some point, that's going to start, and we can't replace them one at a time. We want a consistent look and age for them, for them to be aging at the same time. <clears throat> so if someone were to say to me, uh, Alderman Decker, if the council were to say, like, is this an emergency? I would say, well, I don't think so, no. Um, it could wait a year, but next year, the roof is coming due. Um, I don't know how long I don't know how long we can push them for. I don't know how long they're going to last. At some point, we just have to sort of decide. We know they're rusting a lot on the outside. We know that. We know they're deteriorating on the inside. We know that. We know that they're not worth salvaging uh, or like finishing in, in the cheaper way we were hoping. So this is what it costs to do it now. Um, and we know from a safety perspective that we need to have our parking lot lit up at night. 
So if not this year, it probably needs to be sooner. So I put it this year because our hope was to address it last year because it was rusting and it, it was starting to look um, poor. But we'll see. We'll, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Uh, the present lights, are they, they're not LED, right? They are. Lights. Oh, they yep. are? Yep. They were, they were originally not LED, okay. but they were converted after the fact. At some point, six years ago or so. Six, six years ago. Six years ago or so. Yeah. Maybe earlier. I can't remember. But during your term. I think so. I remember hearing about it. It was early in the Britney days. <laughs> <laughs> Have there been any complaints from neighbors about the uh, the lights? After, after it was converted over to LED, I mean, in, in terms of their brightness and so forth? No. Nope. Just, just wonder. Yeah, no, that's a good question. No complaints. Um, you know, we're mostly surrounded by commercial on our west side and our north side. The south side is tree-lined. We do have some neighbors there. They, we've received no complaints about that. The only complaint I've received about the light poles in the years that I've been here was recently on next door, someone asking about who's responsible for those light poles at the library. They're rusting and looking gross. So, uh, but, it, but it's a good question, but no, we have not received any um, concerns about it. So. Yes, Michelle. I got a bunch of things, so sorry in advance, but yeah. let me, bear with me. Yeah. First of all, the condensing use of Unit replacement in 2028. I should have asked this last time and I didn't. Is that just air conditioner or is that the whole HVAC system or what? It is not the whole HVAC system. I predict the HVAC system will be million plus oh, yeah, if, we sure. did, if we did the whole thing. The condensing unit is just, I think, one of the larger AC units. Okay. And that's an estimate. It's a ballpark given to us by the vendor. Maintenance said that's about the year that it's end of life. Um, that's this year's number. So when we get, I didn't factor in inflation to that number. Mm -hmm. um, I tend to tighten those numbers up, you know, yeah. in the moment or about a year out. So what about the rest of the system since it's not on here and it seems like we're having more and more repairs is that something we need to look at so I you know that is why this started to fall on it as maintenance is starting to sort of say these are the areas that you know we're putting money into but it's still worth um, working with and then this is the area that I'm concerned about um, one of the things that I would like to do in the next year, and I actually, George and I have it on the books, is to do a walk through the building and sort of talk about like the two things. HVAC and sprinkler system are two things. It's like, you know, we have the condensing unit. I did try to increase the maintenance budget a bit to try to anticipate some of the sprinkler system repairs we need to do in sections. That's what he was talking about, sort of like addressing it in sort of like phases based on greatest need. Um, and that's why, of course, we do these five-year plans so that, like, in the next five years, what do we need? And so the condensing unit is the priority, but um, he and I um, are set to do a walkthrough hopefully next week, and we're going to start having those conversations. So what else, when? Thank you. Yeah. That's super helpful because yeah. I wasn't understanding that. Um, Next question. We had talked last time, this is more for the whole board, about doing the parking lot all at once, like both areas of the parking lot. Yep. Did we, I still feel, I, I feel, I'd like to see it all done at once, especially with a four-year gap in here, I, to have it age at the same time and fixed and everything. But I know that way increases the cost. Connected to that is a question. If we can save the inflation, the 10%, and we have 20 grand not used. Is there any way to ask the council for the money to do the, the lights yet this year to save, to use the 20 grand towards it and then save the inflation and do the cheaper option? 
and then next year just do the parking lot, both sections of it in 2025. Okay, so um, regarding the parking lot, that was definitely the other part of this that we had to talk about tonight. Aside mm -hmm. from the light pole costs, the parking lot, I, I think I said in the email, I left it split out so we could remember what it looks like unpackaged because it costs more unpackaged. And mm -hmm. then if we want it, you know, together, um, you know, we can do that for about, I think 200,000 was what um, I had said. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I do think there's value in doing it at the same time. I also, I think it's important to have in the back pocket what it costs to do separately because depending upon what comes to council, if it's a, a heavy year of expenses, we may have to prioritize and say like, well, you know, can we do this section if we can't get, you know, all the money, if that makes sense. So that's, um, but I, I am open to starting with the initial proposal of this is what it costs, this is what we'd like to do, and then sort of be able to also articulate how we could phase it out if it comes down to it. So we can definitely, how, how does everyone else feel about the parking lot before we move into the white pool thing? I, I think we're proceeding think, on all ones. Yeah, totally. And I Chris, agree. I agree. need to do it all. Okay, Phyllis says all. Kristen? I would, pretty, I would like to propose it all at once and okay. not break it up into two phases. But I, I also, I'm, I'm at a bountiful in the parking lot right now. Mm -hmm. um, I also am hesitant to try to use inflation as too much of a bridge. It's not guaranteed. I think it's a great idea to consider that, but we can't, you know, that, that's not an abstract number. That's going to be a soft sell, I'm afraid. Can you say that one more time? So you're saying that you're hesitant to do what? You broke up a little. Um, someone was speaking earlier and said we should factor in that 20, you know, but the inflation and try to oh. save that on inflation and do it now and in my opinion that would be a soft that would be a hard sell for me um, just because I prefer to work in concrete values um, definitely I would use that to calculate future risk but I don't know that's a hash cool Okay. Let's just wait till she gets in. Sure. Yeah. Keep talking with her. Yeah, Kristen, you broke up a little bit. We can we can circle back. I, I think I understand what you're saying about like um, we can we can talk about inflation, but we actually don't know what's going to happen with it. So it's more of a um, a bit of fiction built in with with fact there. Um, regarding the light poles, and Michelle, I, I just kind of want to make sure I understand. Um, so all we have in the bank account for light poles in this moment is 20,000. So we would have to approach the city and ask to borrow money we hadn't asked for to the tune of... 75 grand? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which... I don't know how it works. I'm just asking, is that even a reasonable thing to do if the city still has the budget this year so we can save the money, get that project done? I... I would be hesitant to do it. Um, that to me, that's a, a large amount of money to um, come back for, given that it's not an emergency, right? I, I kind of want to save those asks for our condensing unit is leaking. We thought it would last until 2028, but but it's not. Um, it, it unless it's something that requires urgency, like they know inflation affects every single project that we do in the city and so I, I, I would not recommend making that approach. I, I, and I think because they work, you know, they're all working, they're just kind of ugly at this point, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean you want to take money out of contingency or, you know, use other funds that maybe are for emergency for something that, that's more aesthetic. Okay. 
to the no, I was thinking of emergency. I don't know how it works. That's why I went. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> because I'm assuming that the only place they're going to get the funds from is they're either going to take it out of their contingency fund or there is another project where they saved 100000 bucks, which is probably unlikely. Um, but, you know, but the general the bigger question I, I, I have, and I don't know why I was big to ask this last month, and you may not know the answer to this, but does the city finance their capital budget on an annual basis with cash on hand, or do they borrow on an annual basis for their capital budget? They, I don't know if this answers your question, but I'm going to speak words. Um, they continue to fund it through the landfill funds and borrow if they need to. That, that's what I think, but please do not okay. make that yeah, a blow. Because the land, landfill fund has specific, it has specific dollars that are allocated to specific categories by contract. So right. you know, general capital use is one, and they have parks, and you know, the rest of it nobody cares about, um, except for those who get the money. Um, so they're, they're still doing that, unless it's a really huge project, because they only get a couple million bucks a year, so they can't spend it all. Right. Okay. Th th that's my understanding. And I know they have big projects this year, so to your point about unless they, you know, saved a bunch of money on other projects, I, I don't think that's happening this year. I, I think there's big projects. I, I appreciate the creativity. Um, in, Brandy? Yes. Oh. Um, when you talk about uh, parking lots, I mean, we have massive amounts of parking lots with the school district. Mm -hmm. We don't do everything all in one. We always stage everything. But I think it's because of cost. Sure. Yeah, so, it's, it's an order of magnitude yeah. issue. Mm -hmm. you Pretty much sure. if there's, yeah, holes right. and stuff in the, yeah, in the work yeah. that goes to the top and it yeah. rotates. So, I mean, it's lovely to try to do everything. But budgetary-wise, sometimes it's just not feasible. Yeah, absolutely. And so I, I think that's why we need to have sort of a flexible mindset when it comes to this project. And that's why I wanted to be prepared to speak to it on the whole, but also speak to it in the parts. Um, I, there is value to doing it at once. Efficiency, wearing at the same rate. Um, you know, it's not like one is so much better than the other that, you know, it's like, oh, we can put it off for another 10, 15 years. So I think it's worth saying, this is what it costs. These are the photos. These are the core samples. These are the ratings. Um, but if, if the city looks at the whole of the, the budgetary puzzle, it's worth it to then go to, you know, say, hey, you know, there is another option here. We could split it up and, and try to do it because I do think there is value in doing something next year. I I don't want to keep pushing off the parking lot. I took a photo of it this morning um, as I was walking in with the, the water. It, it's hard to sort of notice it, but like there are, um, you know, de depression areas where there's just standing water when it rains. Mm -hmm. um, so oh, my phone's reminding me I haven't moved enough today. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I think I think we, as Tracy said, we need to be prepared for the possibility, but um, it can't hurt to show the city what it costs to do it at once and see you know see what happens. Um, it's an expensive project, and again, the, the 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 good news about this project is it's not something that we cooked up in the last year. This project has been on the city's five-year plan for the past four years before that. So it is something that we have been intentionally planning. And again, whether or not the money's there is another question. Yes. Yeah, so um, this may be an unpopular suggestion by those who are with better aesthetics, but because we were looking at doing the light poles originally because of the aesthetic issue of taking them down and painting and we thought that the rest of it, because they were all working, were fine. Mm -hmm. uh, but now we're faced with, you know, it's not worth to put the money in it to make it look good because, you know, you don't know how long the rest of it's going to last. Mm -hmm. Are we perhaps better off by combining the parking lot and moving the lights out? I mean, I know we're going to have to look at rusty lights longer, but they're working. 
Um, so, I mean, as a consideration, you know, if given we can't do both, would we rather move the lights out a year or two mm -hmm. versus put breaking up the parking lot? Yeah, I was thinking the same thing. We and and again, I think it's good to go in with a variety of game plans, and that's why I'm glad we're having this conversation because I mean, obviously, in the moment, I can make that decision, but it is helpful to have your um, endorsement um, and whatnot. Yes, absolutely, we could um, we could be faced with the decision of you know you can't do both, pick one. Um, now, as long as the lights continue to work and it's just um, an aesthetic thing and the rust doesn't eat into the, um, the actual mechanics. Yep, mechanics and like make holes in it where they, they might start to like weaken, um, then I do think the parking lot is the better functional choice, right? The lights are working. If the lights start failing, I'll know what, you know, I made <laughs> a poor choice. But you're right. Absolutely, we could we could do that, and um, I think that's a, a worthy suggestion. I th the tricky thing, and maybe this just creates a ripple effect. I wish the roof wasn't landing in 2026, because putting off the lights a year, it's like oh, it's a year; it'll probably be fine. But unless we want to then bump the roof and put the lights in 2026 putting the lights in the roof in the same year is an even bigger issue, as you can see by the cost of it, than the parking lot and the lights. Um, and maybe maybe that's what happens. Maybe the roof will be okay another year and we can move that to 2027 and do the lights in 2026. You know, it will be, those are the things we have to think about. But there is a possibility that if the roof has to happen in 2026, and we decide to forego the lights to prioritize the parking lot, then the lights are not getting done until 2027 at the earliest. And if they start to fail, then we repair them. Maybe there's a way to, like, you know. Well, I'm concerned that we don't take care of them for what we have right now. So spraying Rust-Oleum on them or something so that they don't get any worse is not a bad idea. Like, I mean, that's minimal amount of money right. to go and paint them and, and like, preserve them for a, at least another year or two. The thing that concerns me is that they said that when they started to take them apart, that they said that there was significant problem on the inside, and we don't know how long that will last. Right. We might have an emergency need to buy all new lights by the end of the year. Right. Yeah, it's... It's an unknown, and I don't think anyone can, can, can know. And it's possible that one of them will fail and the rest will be fine. And we can afford to lose one. Um, I just don't know, and I don't, have a, I don't have any other way to gauge or estimate it other than they know the parts are failing on the outside. I mean, on the inside. You're right, we could spray something with Rust-Oleum on the outside. It doesn't necessarily address the inside. When I spoke with them last... They said, the, the, the person who did the remediation for the safety railing, he said the safety railing is going to go before the light poles go. He, he didn't see, like, any really thin spots. There were thin spots on the safety railing, not on this. So I do think the externals will last longer. It's now the internals where I'm, I just don't know. Yes, Carson. It's an opinion. Take it or leave it. If I had to be ruthless about these light poles and... It would be the aesthetics are one thing. If a light goes out, a little more than one thing. But if those things structurally fail and fall on a car or a child, we're going to have a, a little bit of a different situation. I, I want to really place some priority into making sure that a strong wind isn't going to blow one over on an innocent child or adult. Yeah. yeah, or a new car. More car. <laughs> yeah. it, well, I think that goes to your know. point, yeah. saying that they didn't see any structural issues with the light pole, Correct. that Correct. they're perfectly fine that way. Yep. It's really the fact that the seals have probably leaked on the inside, and so there's rust on the inside, mm -hmm. you know, that eventually may, may affect the control box for the, for the light head. Yeah, and, and you do bring up a good point, Chris, and I, we have not seen any evidence that there is something structurally dangerous right now with any of the light poles. Did they check? 
a few and make a general assumption on all 21, or did they check every single one for structural soundness? Um, I mean, I can have them do it. Um, it. Really, it's based on my assessment of them, I guess, so I could have them take a look at it. Um, I've walked around and looked at all the polls because okay. I had to take photos, and um, I did not see anything um, to indicate concern. Okay. So... Um, I'm happy to always do a double. There aren't, there aren't any penetrations or anything else. It's just correct. Scabby. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. okay. That important that question. Sense. though. Important question. So. So, um, you know, I think for the the purposes of this discussion, 2026 on, we can talk about those projects as they get closer. Um, like I said, I will. I think Michelle has a good point. I'm going to continue to have conversations about what are the big HVAC and fire sprinkler system needs coming up to see if there's anything else that's going to start rolling into this five-year plan. Um, but in regards to 2025, um, we have the light poles, which again may go down in cost to um, by about ten thousand dollars if we pick the, the other ones and I'm going to continue to collaborate with the city to, to identify that uh, and then we have the parking lot um, split out right now but it could be combined um, and we can try for both of those projects and then I can as we're putting the pieces together talk with the city about priorities of possibly splitting out the parking lot, um, possibly um, moving the light poles out and doing the entirety of the parking lot. So there's there's a couple of options there. Um, making the, based on what we know right now, that the light poles are, from a safety perspective, sound, and an unknown lifespan left. Does this board feel comfortable with us requesting both full parking lot and the lights and if there's not enough money for that moving the light poles out to another year and trying for the full parking lot as long as there's some maintenance to them so that they don't get worse mm -hmm. to the external yes yeah because i don't think we can maintain the internals no but at least try to maintain what you have. Yeah. Yep. Brittany, what's the what's the combined value? Because I know that ninety seven in twenty twenty nine is is an increase if you split them apart. They had two prices on there because it was a little less. The what I would be asking for is about two hundred thousand in twenty twenty five to okay. the entire parking. Okay. I think the board's pretty on board with unanimous on we want the whole parking lot for I'm the not, first day yeah, oh, except Tracy okay sorry not. <laughs> do you have anything any other like what what is I what think it's a lot here? of money to ask for something that probably doesn't necessarily have to be done right now I can't remember you I shared the photos right I just want to make sure you okay um, are you seeing the light poles as a greater priority? Is that what you're no. saying? No. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. But especially since, I mean, I might, I mean, we're living in an era right now that everyone's just trying to get by, right? Because everything costs forever. So, I mean, I myself have light fixtures on my house that I'm like, well, when they go, I'll fix them. I'm not a hundred cent, you know, like preventative type thing, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I mean, these, those lights could last another 30 years for all you know. You don't know, you know. They could. You have no idea. None of us do. I'm not exactly sure. I would like to state what I want. I think it agrees with Tracy. I'm just, to be very clear, I'm in favor of doing the, the entire parking lot and not breaking it up into phases. But I feel that we should push the light poles out and not not ask to borrow for something that we don't direly need right now. If they're working, they're safe, 
they might last a few more years with some TLC, I would prioritize the parking lot um, and save that Hail Mary ask for something that might be a little more urgent or emergent. Is, do, are we... Yeah, I'm just like, like what do you, what have you always kind of gone to the city with for a budget? What, like, like your ass? Is it around 250 or is it? No, I mean, usually it's less than that. So mm -hmm. um, this is more expensive because they're more expensive projects, right? I think the. Uh, and the bathroom, for instance, got nixed because it was so expensive. So I can't, mm -hmm. I don't know. Not something you look at every day. Yeah, right. The yeah. bathrooms are. But I would say the parking lot is deteriorating, more deteriorated than the bathroom. Um, and I think the thing that we have to be prepared for if we're not doing the light poles this year is you're right, they could last another 10 years. However, DPW, while they can't give me a number, they said they were not in good condition, right? And If they start to fail, we have to be prepared. We can't, it's not like a house light, right? These are commercial grade poles. They're about $4,500 a piece. It's not something that we can just go to Home Depot and, you know, pay for piecemeal, right? Like they're not residential. So it would be something that we would have to endure until we could get it on the like if you if because you you see how long this process takes right and again I'm not trying to argue about this I'm just trying to make sure oops, we we realistically understand that probably similar to the school district like if the lights start to fail in um, October we have to wait until next May to put in that request right unless it's emergency it's in a complete blackout right and then maybe, you know, the city might have contingency funds. We just have to be prepared that we can't move quickly like we could necessarily with um, like an interior light fixture that goes. This is this is a large project. That's why it's a bit of a sticker shock. That's why it costs a lot of money. They've lasted for 24 years. They're, they're not young, so they could last another 10 years. But we just have to, you know, recognize that we may have to wait a bit with less than ideal lighting conditions. Well, I, I will say that, you know, if the internal controls fail, you know, there's a, there's a power pack in there and then there's wires that go up to the head. If those fail, they can be replaced. I mean, you know, they have the ability to do that. Yeah. The reason that you don't like doing that is because it's very time consuming, you know, and you got to take the pole down, you got to dish it all through. It's, it's a major pain and if you wanted to do all of them, then it's not cost effective. But if you had a onesie, two easy it, it's mm -hmm. you know to get the lights back going. You you, know, you might spend six, seven hundred bucks doing it, but you have a light, and it's not forty five hundred. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. It'll and still look crappy. Yeah. Yeah. I just I think we have to recognize that they are old, right? We're not trying to get brand new light fixtures, and they're only you know three or four years old. They are. They are older, but um, how do how do we know we can get the parts? They fail. Oh, I think it's just we don't know right. that. Yeah, it's it's like old parts. yeah it's, it, they've been retrofitted, so they already have LED lights in them. So the, the replacement stuff is pretty standard. The hardest part is is if the pole was extra narrow, getting something small enough to fit in the pole. Those are pretty big poles, um, so it probably wouldn't be an issue. So, out of curiosity, if we delay the light poles, when? Are you suggesting delaying them one year? Are you suggesting waiting until a certain percentage of them are failing on the internals? What I'm looking looking for a little guidance here. If just a quick question, how many how many lights are the, is the city talking about replacing in the very near term? Do you know? I don't. 
I know there's a few at some of the parks, um, but I, I don't know the answer. Okay. Not as many as this project, I know that. And then another question, not related to the lights, but do you happen to know where, um, you know, the city, I believe, has some priorities as to which road projects they that are needing attention mm -hmm. the most. Do you know if the parking lot is among those priorities or not, or is it completely separate? Yeah, so the parking lot is not part of the roads program. It's not. So, yeah, it would be separate. I only ask them to give a PASER rating just so that when we approach you in council and they're talking about, like, oh, you know, Hillendale Drive's a priority. It has a PASER rating of a three. You can say, okay, we're doing that road this year, and it's a three, and the parking lot's a four. So, you know, that way there's sort of this understanding of um, how the parking lot relates to other roads. So, yeah. So I have to leave, but... Sorry, Barb. I promise I, you, I promise to be fast. You know, I'm not into the aesthetics. If they work, push them back. Something that is affecting people more, the parking lot with cars and bumps and whatever, like you say, making it worse. Uh, in the future if we don't address that now. So I would say I wouldn't worry about those lights if they're functional and they aren't going to endanger anyone. Yeah. Let them go. I mean, I'm super sad about the lights. I was supposed to fix this for a really small amount of money. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing makes me more cranky than having to, to spend, roll over a project. It should have been done back then. Spend an extra 80K, right? <laughs> yeah, well, that I'm, was not I'm, your day. I'm very sad about that, um, for sure. Okay, um, bye. Oh, bye. thanks, Barbara. Bye. All right, so bye. what I'm hearing... Um, I wanted to answer your question, your initial question. Oh, yes. yes, yes, yes. It's just an idea, and I'd like to know what, what you all think. 5.25, so either five or six of the lights out of the 21, that's that's 25% of the parking lot lighting. Right now, where we haven't failed. They're ugly. They're an eyesore. They're sound. They haven't failed. If we get to the point where we have done up to 25% repairs on these 21 light fixtures, that's got to be a good indicator that, as a, as a whole, they're on their way out. Just a thought. When she, when you asked for a benchmark, how many need to fail before we say, okay, we need to get this back on the budget like now? It's just an idea. I don't know what you would all think about that. I mean, it's not. A bad, I don't think it's a bad benchmark. I think that you know, if, if they're not structurally failing and you know you can repair them, it just makes more sense that you would put a different priority ahead of that. I mean, initially when we looked at this project, it was, let's just sandblast the... Sandblast the outside. So they look nice. Right. I mean, that was our original yeah. plan. Well, because we thought all was well on the Right. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I still think that should be our initiative to try to get them to look nice. Because, you know, but I don't know if it's necessary to replace all of them. I don't... I just, not ready to go there. I yet. mean, we, we could. We have the money. I could... Tell DPW to sandblast and powder coat them. It would just it was just their guidance that they didn't think it was a good use of, of funds to sandblast and powder coat something with that. Now what I can do, and it will mean we're we're moving this out, you know, to an unknown time next year, I can go back and say to them, like, you know, can you repair these if they start to fail, right? You said, like, it's all about stringing it out, but I don't want to speak for them, right? Yeah, like, right. I, I'm the librarian, and so <laughs> um, I can go back and say, like, the board has some questions. Like, if this light pole fails, can you fix it, and how much would it cost internally? Um, you know, you said you wanted them covered for something. I'm assuming you said Rust-Oleum. Well, whatever it was that yeah. it was going to make them last longer. So, so that, that, that was our goal. That that was, that was the, our goal was right. to make them look good and make them right. last longer. Right, and that would be the sandblasting and powder coating for this amount of money, um, and we would have done that, but for the fact that and so some something told them it's not worth it. That it and and Ryan's pretty responsible with money, right? So for him to say like. We, this, 
you should don't, don't put your money on the Titanic. Don't don't you know sink your money into it. So I can get more information from him. I can tell him. Did that Ryan know about the parking lot? Did Ryan know about? Ryan does, no, Ryan doesn't know about the parking lot because he's the one <laughs> that's that in the same budget. Yeah, like, yeah, he, he does. He does. Mm. he does. Ryan recommended doing it in phases. He thought that just from a like, it's a huge financial ask, and so maybe split it up. But Ryan is aware that both of these projects are coming due. He, because these are more public works style projects, that's why I've been having him, you know, assist me with sort of the condition check. So. I can ask him what it would take to get them repaired should they fail. Um, I mean, we, what about that thought? Like, what if you put one, like, you start August of 2025 and finish it 20, you know, like, finish half. Do We have 22 poles, 11 poles for the last half of the six months, and then the next six months into the next year, you do the other half. So it kind of feels like it's done in a year, but really it's in two budget you cycles. Mean, you mean powder coating and spray spraying? No, no, like if you wanted you mean to replace, replace everything. You mean new poles. Yeah, I yeah. See. You mean phasing Parking it? Parking lot and, and... I see. I, yeah. Is yeah. power that coating is and yeah. sandblasting the only, like the cheapest and quickest way to do that? Is there anything else more that the they more could do? The more permanent way to do it. I mean, you could just paint them, but it, it'll peel off. It'll, it'll look but junky or junky. But rust would that peel? Yeah. Absolutely. Kind of over wear and tear. You know, yeah, it just those. and it, it just doesn't last the same. I mean, you, you want that electroplating activity so that it gets a decent bond. I mean, you could it could last three four years and you'd be out there painting again. Well, so that's what I mean. Could we could we get a more temporary fix for two years to cover it and then either split it or you know look revisit it in twenty twenty seven so that we can get through between now and then and worry about the parking lot and the roof instead. I mean, I would have to ask Brian, well, we know that it's about $20,000 to sandblast and powder coat them. That's DPW taking, unscrewing, taking down each pole, driving them down to um, the local place, and then bringing them back and setting them back up. And I think it's like, I think it's like eight hours of work for every three poles, I think. So, um, to I, I think it would be a question of is that a good use of their time and the money? Like, let's say we decide to do the twenty thousand because you can't just yeah paint it. You have you know if if you want to stretch it, is it worth twenty thousand dollars? to revisit and get new poles in two years? Or is, if the, the poles are structurally sound, do we just let them continue to look grungy knowing that we plan on addressing it in two years? Well, and, and the thing I was just thinking about, like, I'm trying to visualize the pictures you showed us of the inside of the pole, but it was, uh, was it the fact that there was rust on the inside of the pole, or was it the fact that the, that the uh, controls were all cut up? He said that the mechanicals were failing and sort of falling apart, and he would not recommend. You know, it's kind of like when you look in the hood of an old car and you go, "Don't put any more money into this. Sell the car." That's what he was basically saying. Don't put any more money into this. Sell the car. I. But like I said, I can go back and I can ask him, like, how how would one fix it and what would it cost? Um, I don't think it's worth it to refinish them if we're planning on replacing them in a couple of years. And that's why I wanted to ask that. So I think if, if we're going to replace them in a couple of years, I think you better have spot painting. What's that? Spot painting them instead. Right. Yeah. I'd, I'd want to, speaking for myself, I'd want to know that cost of spot painting versus sandblasting and recoding so that if we can get to 2027, I have a, a pretty concrete number that I'm dividing per those years to say if it's 20 grand and I'm spending $10,000 a year to get to 2027 versus if it's 10 grand and I'm spending 5,000 a year to get to 2027 to do the big facelift that I think would be valuable information to us to know. Um, would the spot painting be done by staff? 
<laughs> yes, are you getting up there, Brittany? Yes. <laughs> you know, I do like heists. Um, Not by you, your staff. Right. I'm thinking public work staff. I mean, this, this is entertaining a new approach, which I've done no research on, mm-hmm. right? So at this point, all I can we, the decision we're making today is if we're putting it off, I have more research that I can do. I can ask those questions, but I, I don't know the answer to that. DPW is very busy. Um, I would have to figure out if they have the time to do it. When do they have the time to do it? What will that cost? Can they can they fix the internals? Um, it, I mean, based on the conversation we had, obviously his recommendation at the time was they're falling apart. Let's talk about replacing them. But we can unpack that, and I can ask those additional questions. Um, we can absolutely prioritize. Yes, Michelle. Did you have something? Well, I don't know. I'm, I'm thinking, in a, in a sense, we already have the answer from, from Ryan that that these poles need replaced. That, you know, yeah, we can throw some bad money after, you know, kind of band-aiding them, but it seems like he's basically said, I mean, you know, if, with the analogy, you know, lift up the hood, the car's really no good, you might as well look at something different. To me, that says a lot. Yeah, I mean, I I don't, I would be uncomfortable putting money into these polls. I, Ryan, the same person who said, like, you know, we can split, we can split out this parking lot, and that, you know, he, he is the type of person, he's a problem solver. So I, I feel like if he thought that there were a way to repair them, to put money into them, and, and really, um, you know, refurbish them, that, that that would have come up. So if if we defer the light poles, I would say we defer them hoping that they will continue to endure and and revisit it either next year if for some reason they're not going well um, or, you know, 2027. So what... <clears throat> Taking a step back, bigger picture, what's in worse shape, the roof or the parking lot? And what's the bigger risk to the library? Is the roof more likely to leak and cause a lot of damage, hurt the collection potentially, hurt people, something, you know, the ice that's always forming, you know, that we you're very vigilant about dealing with, but it's because the gutters and, you know, everything isn't yeah. good anymore, or the parking lot. Here's my my thought. I'm just shooting from the hip here. What if we moved the part the roof to next year, because that's the big one, right? The biggest thing on here. Well, the roof. Oh, the the roof to 2025. Mm-hmm. And what if we split the parking lot and the lights, like Tracy suggested, between 2026 and 2027? And we did half the lights and the worst part of the lot in 26, and then proposed half the lot and half the lights in 2027. I'm not comfortable making that move mostly because there was more, a little more research I wanted to do on the roof because maybe it could last until 2028. I wanted to get some final numbers. That That is one number, but I wanted to get multiple quotes. So I I don't feel prepared to propose a number this year for the roof. There's just a few other elements to it. That's a good number for 2026 because it's a year out and I have some time to like do final logistics planning on that project. I don't feel comfortable making that proposal for 2025 knowing that the money's the 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 numbers are due to the city tonight as soon as this uh, meeting ends. So Brittany, when I look at splitting the parking lot and the lights 50-50 it's like the first year would be one fifty eight thousand. The second year with the seven with the shed in there would be one sixty five five oh five ninety. But then you're dealing with I don't know what you want to do that third year with those forty thousand and fifty nine thousand things. I'm gonna push those off to the last to twenty twenty nine. And I was gonna ask you too about the door thing. Is that like Fobs? Yes. Okay. I feel like that's something that I mean could be. We we could 
we could push the fobs out. It's again, it's something you know we have to make five year plans and think about what we need. But things always get pushed or moved depending upon the priority. So yeah, the fobs could be moved at some point. The public furniture, that's yeah. the meeting room chairs. Yeah, eventually they need to be They're going to need yeah. some help, I think, in the next couple of years. It's too bad the fobs are 40, because we have 20 right now, if we're not doing the polls, that you could push that money to doing your fobs. Sure, yeah. Yeah, I and that that is a project, again, that will require more research and conversation. Right. So I'm, I, we can't move any of these projects. I wouldn't recommend it because I need to do more due diligence. I've done well, my due diligence on the parking lot and the lights. What so. And when you, I was going to say, if you do move those two to the, you know, doing all of the parking lot and all of the lights to the front half, that eliminates the 97 at the end. You got like nothing in that column then. Right, but at that point, I may have had a conversation with um, maintenance and DPW about the HVAC and the sprinkler system. I just no, but I had that in the third year. Yeah. So your first year, I have the whole parking lot, or sorry, half the parking lot and half the lights in 2025. Mm -hmm. And then in 2026, the other half with the other lights, half, and then your shed. Which could go down because maybe the school district would, you know, can help with the thing. And then in twenty twenty, well, they are going to help us with yeah, the shed. Right. It's just the materials cost, yeah. and they're working on a budget. So I just left the seven thousand yeah. there because I don't know what the materials are. Right. Going to be. And then twenty twenty seven being the roof. your HVAC or your roof. I like that. But I can tell you the twenty twenty nine. If you take the ninety seven out, you're you're going to fill that with HVAC for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Right, no, but yeah. No offense, but that's you know that's five years out, and the stuff will be thirty years old, mm -hmm. and yeah, you're, I know. Gonna, you're gonna be spending <coughs> spending some pretty decent money on that. I mean, we can we can talk about how to sort of talk about 2026 and beyond. Um, I think we need to make a decision on 2025 right now, whether it's half a parking lot and half a lights, and then we could do the rest of that in 2026. I I would almost prefer to do the parking lot fully and move the light. If, if we were going to do a job, I would rather do one in one year and then move all of the lights to 2026 if, if we decided that's where we do it. Because they're, I don't want to say they're exactly the same number, but they're in the realm of enough. And if I'm going to execute and plan a project, I'd rather be thinking parking lot and how to like move people and make plans then like live half in the parking lot world and half in the light world and then you know that that, that would be my preference from a project management perspective instead of having them come back you know twice to do the same job if that makes sense over two years if if, if we're not going to try for both of them. Oh. I just think it's a big ask to try for both of them being it, over three thousand, three hundred thousand. It it is a big ask, and it's a again, not 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 what I wanted, right? No, and none of us want that, right? All of us would have wanted the the light pole re refurbishment to work out. So, um, <laughs> which you still could potentially, you could still do that and make them last two years and do your lights in two years. Yeah, I did. I, I I mean, you could vote today to tell me. Spend the twenty thousand that we have, refurbish all the light poles, and maybe we'll get lucky. We we could do that. We could. We have the money. I just well, you're only getting lucky for two years, right? But I don't want to spend twenty twenty thousand yeah, in two it years. Doesn't sound I don't know. Good. People do that on cars all the time. But we're going to ask <laughs> instead of doing a car payment about the refurbishment year. versus the repainting, right? We're asking. Well, I think what Brittany's saying is she needs she needs to take something to the seat to walk by tomorrow. And so we need to give her some direction for that. Um, based on what I'm hearing, my recommendation, again, based on the feedback you're giving me, is we request the parking lot, we move the lights. I can ask Brian for any additional information. Do you have any other ideas? Um, I, I had even, you know, yeah. So because they are working right now, and they're not a safety issue right now. So... Um, 
let's let's request the full parking lot and I just think you need something to do with maintenance on those like like just somehow yeah making sure they don't get worse whether they're painted because that's not that's not right either there's always maintenance cost in everything that you have so to say a maintenance cost is maybe it's not 20 grand it's five thousand just to paint them all or something yeah. so that they at least last two more years of taking it on the budget i will ask yeah. dpw if they have a surface solution that is not the sandblasting and powder coating but that might afford some level of protection and maybe look a little nicer and, and make them look a little <clears throat> nicer yeah. um and then again just recognizing that if the roof does land where it does in 2026 because I, if 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 we can't get the light poles in the parking lot we're definitely not going to get the roof and the light poles right, right. in like 2026 mm -hmm. so then um realistically probably a, a 2027 thing which again they may last mm -hmm. um have i had a lucky year this year i have not right the building is not that but maybe i'm due so you're due, I heard you're due. maybe i'm due so, so that's what that's what i'm hearing yeah yeah or somebody want to make a because the motion on the floor is to approve it as it is so we need to revise we have to fail it and then do a new one and alderman decker you had another statement or question or no. praise for me no. <laughs> I don't know I, I I guess my gut is you know go for the parking lot and maybe you know because I, I think the roof is a realistic issue we don't know what we're dealing with there um, and it's going to be expensive um, I, I'm almost inclined to go for the full parking lot and the lights but I, I think there's people who disagree, and for reasons so. But I, you know, again, when, when Ryan said it's the internals of those lights that's the problem, that's, to me, that's huge. The lights are on top of concrete things, right? They're on mm -hmm. concrete. So when they redo the parking lot, do they have to remove all those? No. They don't, no, because someone very wise plan plan them so that they're um outside the outside park. They are. okay i just yeah. can't yeah. 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 don't we speak of yeah. 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 Um, yeah so that is that is good news that we don't have to can worry about that. can you put a note in in the you know in your comment section because i presume you give this five year capital plan to the to the city you know with mm -hmm. the yep. notes on there yep. that if we were to move the lights to 2027 that there's a note in there saying, you know, there's there's the possibility that this may have to be moved up if we have a wholesale failure of lights in, in the next two years. Just just so they have an awareness that we know that, you know, mm -hmm. um, staff has identified that the internals are an issue. Yes, we can repair them, but you know, you're not going to repair all 21 of them because that it's not a repair anymore. Um, that you know, we may have to move it up. On a, you know, as needed basis, but we're trying to be practical on what the city can afford. So, in summary, for whichever parcel wants to, after we fail this motion, who wants to make the new motion? It sounds like full parking lot in 2025, relocate light poles to 20. And I know not everyone may agree on this, but based on so that we can have a motion that likely will pass. Uh, move the light poles to 2027 with a note acknowledging the deterioration and that's what I'm hearing and then and, and as okay for with that because you're the one that no, just, I, suggested doing all of it I'm okay you've, you've made some good points and I, I'm, not, I'm not trying to push back against necessarily so you've made some good points so I'm okay with it so yeah I'm just worried that we're not going to get what we need <laughs> you know what if we if we propose both and they're saying well the, the lights are cheaper get the lights and now you've just lost your parking lot well we still might only get half sure. a parking lot true now the, because yeah. you don't know that the good right. news is i mean the good, the good news is that it's not just the form that gets rubber stamped right there's time for conversation and the council is very good at like listening to you know 
like if we were to say, because Ryan said he'd be willing to speak on the condition of the light poles and the parking lot. Um, so, you know, we would have a chance to say like, yeah, you could give us the lesser one, but that is not a good idea. And, you know, based on all of these things, and I feel very comfortable with all the work that we did and the photos we took and the core samples, I feel very comfortable saying that this is a, that the parking lot is, is in the state that it's in. And again, whether there's higher priorities, that's, that's not something we can control. It might be that there are like seven roads that are way worse and we get nothing, right? That's very possible. And that's reasonable, right? If there's something much, much worse than what we're enduring, then that's where the money should go. Um, so I, I don't know if that would necessarily happen because we have an opportunity to talk and prioritize. Um, but I, I do wish I could have, I wish I had another month because I wish I could sort of take some of these concerns that I'm hearing and go back to Ryan and say, like, you know, wh what are your thoughts on this? But we're, we're just out of time. And so... Um, well, when does the budget get pushed in front of the council? September, this is the planning September, stage, correct? September. So, theoretically, you could have you know, that conversation with Ryan and tell us how can we, you know, make them look nicer and tell us other things and that we could always make a, a dollar for dollar swap. Because they're trying to plan on a, on a macro scale and if you don't change the dollar amounts, it shouldn't matter, but yeah. I don't know. I don't know the internal process, so I, I yeah, can't answer that. And I and I don't want to speak for their internal process. The uh, the numbers were due actually on Friday, but I had said, oh, <laughs> I have a board meeting on Tuesday, the second read of the budget. So um, I, I told them I would email them tonight after this meeting. Um, at that point, that's not to say there can't be minor adjustments, but I really don't want to be tossing big surprises at them because they need to start building. What? Because I think August is actually one of the August is one and September is the other. I think I present in September, but they need the full package to show to the council in August. Right. So we are we we are at the point. I am. I really think that you know, based on the feedback I've gotten, full parking lot, move the light poles, and um, that's really all you know we can do based on what we know. Next How Tuesday. How much can we ask for the light poles and the full parking lot? What do you think? I mean, I I just don't know what else is being asked, so it's hard. Um, obviously, it's a project again based on what I when I hear the word deteriorate, I want to resolve it. Um, but do I know is it the biggest priority compared to other things in the city? I don't. And that's hard because I'm working in isolation. Like if I knew right now our cap, our total capital requests from all the department heads were like, I don't know, however many <laughs> thousands over, it would be really easy for me to start making priorities because I want to be a team player. But I, I don't know that. I, I don't know where we're at. Yes. I don't know if this will help, but uh, next Tuesday, um, Scott is going to make a presentation to the council. Correct. Yeah. Of 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 all the road projects, from what I understand. Yep. And that seems to me a very pivotal and very important meeting. I think, really, I think everybody in town should attend. Yeah, I will be there, actually, yeah. because it's helpful for me, because that DPW and roads, that's a big part of the Capitol, and I like to hear what's being asked. So, actually, yeah. I, I was wrong. I thought it was August, but I, I forgot they're presenting in July. So, yeah, so we are out of time on that. Um, so yes, you're right. They they are presenting, um, and that's why they need these numbers now. So um, yeah, that. Can we do an informal poll? So it sounds like Alderman and Phyllis were proposing full parking lot plus full lights. Just request them for 2025, but then which would be 360 dollars, just so people know. Right, it's two hundred dollars plus one hundred and sixty. Yeah, three, 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 six. About, oh yeah, about three twenty. Three twenty. Thirty-eight. So is anybody else? Not anybody else, but are there people in support of that or not? Or thinking we the they whole, want the lights. The whole parking lot and the lights. 
Yeah, so it sounds like Phyllis and Alderman Decker are at least amenable to that, but it, I don't, I'm not which, seeing anyone else. Which would else. be a price tag of about 320 Right, mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Barb uh, seemed to indicate full parking lot, but not the length of the space at, you know, 27 I'd love to have it all, but I don't think we would get it all. <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, and, and I think I think that's probably realistic. I think it's good for us to come with a reasonable ask. Yes. Not mm-hmm. like a two for the moon right. ask. I just, but what I, we should be very conservative with our thoughts. The yes. one thing that I don't want to do, and this is the whole point of the five year plan, is I don't want to create a false illusion of the status of these, right? Because if if we just sort of say like, oh, we don't want to ask for the money and then we hide it somewhere else and then it fails, then it becomes a financial surprise that, that the city doesn't appreciate either, right? So and that's why I, that's why I indicated putting the note there okay. saying right. that yeah. it worked now, we're you know yep. we know that they're an oncoming issue, but yep. we think that the parking lot is a bigger issue than yep. the lights at this point. And we want you to recognize that fact. I mean, isn't that what we're doing with the unit, the condensation? I mean, oh, yeah, that I mean that's the same thing. thing. <laughs> right. And, yeah. and again, I, I, I think it's, I think it's reasonable to do this. I just think we, we don't want to disappear it. The light poles have been on the five-year plan for a while because we knew we needed to address it. We come to this. Parking lot is expensive because it is. And so I, I think it's reasonable to push it out but I just I don't want it to disappear yeah. from the plan because we need no. we need we don't want to surprise the city that's the whole point of this mm-hmm. planning process well isn't part of the part of the the explanation saying that you know we looked at addressing this this year it was to be an aesthetic fix we didn't realize the internals were going that bad when we started it we now know we need to replace everything and yep. We recognize that we're going to have to move that out a little bit because we have other priorities we thought needed to be done first. Yep, yep. I will summarize that nicely in a three sentence. <laughs> so yes. So I'm going to motion to. to, we not to sorry, we have to fail the current. That's what I was going to say. This is going to motion to fail. And you just okay, vote, right. You can just vote against it, the motion yeah. that's on the floor, and then put it. Oh, that is true. We could do or that. Or you can yeah, amend the motion true. that's on the floor. Yep, so, you're right. Either way. Yep. So can we vote on the original motion? The original motion to approve this as is. All those in favor? All those against? Aye. 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 Looks like unanimous for everybody who's here. You're talking about this. Yeah. Yeah. This as is. We need to fail it. Okay. And then now we can so the so can I get a new motion on the floor to present to the city the full parking lot costs in 2025 after Brittany amended, amends the budget. Keep 2026 as is for now and move the lights into 2027. Is that what we're talking about? Yes. Are we moving anything to 2029? Because we'll have nothing in that count. I think by the time I do the walkthrough of the HVAC, I think the I, don't, I don't have enough information because I haven't done the walkthrough yet to put something there. So I won't have anything for this year, but it, it will get filled up okay. by next year. So. Can we put in an HVAC placeholder? I don't. I for twenty twenty. I don't even know what to. Yeah, that's a. I that's can't a even big, guess. We don't have a number to put in. I think, oh, I know, I think I you're just, just better off just saying you know twenty twenty nine at this point. There's nothing, but we know we have huge, huge, um, potential huge ask for HVAC yeah. replacements, and we're working on it. That's what I mean. Can we just put the words in like potential huge HVAC costs? Evaluate. I don't know. If you put in one million, it makes the rest <laughs> of the numbers look really good. Yeah. <laughs> how, about, how about this? Yeah, I, um, I, um, I will, um, I, in the email that I sent to the mayor and finance, I will say verbally what we're doing for 2029. I just don't want to put no number yeah. and a description for the council, and they're just going to see it and go, well, what is, you know. So I, I will make sure that the city, the mayor, and, and finance. Yeah, you don't want to make a number up. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't want to. Make I try not to. That's always well, a good Well, and I'm plan. kind of concerned too when we move the lights to twenty twenty seven, and have the additional ninety nine dollars in there. Now we're, you know, getting close to over two hundred thousand mm, asked too. Right. 
So that's why I don't know. Could you move one of those to 2029? I mean, the, the, the key fob probably could. Um, we've been operating on keys for, for this long. Um, the public furniture, it just depends on how gentle people are being. The padding is starting to get a little old, but, um, you know, yeah. So well, I think we'll have, we will have a better understanding of those priorities as we get a little bit closer. But for now, I would say we leave it where it is and address it address if we need to make a waterfall because there's no there's no monetary um, at, you know assertion to any of these numbers in the budget itself because they're truly only budgeting 2025 this is the projection correct yeah and so, really much of the conversation possibly not so much for roads because you really if those are huge numbers they're talking about right. um, but really typically the questions that get asked are about 2025 and not beyond and, and as long as you indicate to them, you know, hey, we're, you know, we're still evaluating, and you know, just know that mm -hmm. those num those numbers may move based on priority. And that's mm -hmm. how it works. Yep. Or at least it's supposed to. I'd like to make a motion that we move forward with proposing to the mayor and the council doing the entire parking lot in 2025 and moving out the light poles to 2027. I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All those opposed? Aye. All right, motion passes. Did Phyllis vote? Oh, oh, sorry, tell us. Aye. 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 Um, okay, next item on the agenda is discussion action, the proposed 2025 library operating budget, second read. So can I get a motion to approve the 2025 operating budget as proposed so that for Brittany to present it to the council? So moved. I second. Go ahead. Thank you. <laughs> Any discussion questions from last time? I don't think we had as much discussion on this one. Not much, James. Yeah. Um, have you gotten the updated projection numbers for salary and benefits yet? They yeah. won't do that until after this meeting. So yeah. we just yeah. have to it's a know that it's biggest. gonna yeah it's gonna it's gonna go up. But the city will recommend or supply what is needed based on okay. the current staffing and salaries. Um, yeah, this is pretty similar. Um, I made some very minor adjustments. Um, I dropped the AV budget after speaking. You about that. Yep. You know, AV is interesting. We're starting to draw down on CD book audiobooks. They still get checked out quite a bit where we're not like throwing them out, but less cars have CD players, less people have forgive the 90s term, boom boxes. So um, in talking with staff, we felt we could reduce it by about 3,000, um, which is nice because I had needed to increase electronic materials. And so those basically offset each other now. So that was uh, a productive conversation that I had. Um, other than that, as you know, the maintenance is the big increase and it's based on historical trends. Um, Housekeeping services, it's a new contract year. Um, it'll go to bid with the city. So um, I have a placeholder there. We don't know what the bid will be. So increase it to hopefully meet those expectations. That was a recommendation from the city. Um, the other big change is the computer charges. The city has a new email management software. It's it's all about, you know, security and, and different um, um, email account packages that will allow for like two-factor authentication and all those types of things. So that um, is a necessary. So if you look at the budget overall, um, we're, we're flat in most areas except for the building and then a little bit in computer charges. Otherwise, I tried to keep things pretty, pretty flat. So. Um, we're getting some good revenue from the um, system. Brittany, is there any more thought about um, grant work at all? 
Yeah, we've gotten several grants this year. You know, we got the grant for the adult changing table. Um, we received a grant for um, adult programming. We received a grant for the Tony boxes. All those were funded through a grant. I wrote a grant for trying to offset more of the adult changing table. It covered most of it, but not all of it, so I'm waiting to hear back on that grant. So um, should we be putting that projection into this budget? Because you have just dash. You have nothing listed. Excuse me. Oh, so, so those were the grants that I did for this year. I don't know what types of grants we'll work for for next year, so... Um, when you write the grants, you write them for a specific project, so if you don't get the grant money, you don't do yeah. the project. Is that the idea? Yeah, it's hard to estimate, you know, what grant revenue we'll get, and it's hard to estimate then what money we're spending on the grant expense side, so I usually just leave those zero, and then it, what happens, happens. But we were, we were very successful with our grants this year, and I do... Um, plan on writing more grants um, in the back half of this year and next year as well. So, in the I had a request actually regarding that in your director's report, could we could you add a grants section? Just like, sure. could you submit any in the past month? Are you planning any? What are they for? Yeah, not to put a lot more work on your plate, but I think it'd be helpful to yeah, no, absolutely keep uh, up to date on what. Yes, I what we're trying to find. If you don't want okay. yeah. Maybe there's a grant for light bulbs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. It'd be nice. <laughs> yeah. What well, can we get? Solar there's, powered one? Maybe, maybe there's, there's a, a, well, there's yeah. a grant for solar panel roofing. You know, they, yeah. They make those, you know, solar, you know, solar tile roofs, you know. Or ADA yeah. compliance light. You know, for seeing yeah. <laughs> <laughs> something out there. Yeah, no, there is. Um, <laughs> I'm sure somebody's throwing money in. Thank you. That would be helpful. Mm -hmm. Any other discussion on the operating budget or questions? Why should we wait for Kristen to come back before we vote? Did she take a phone call or did? Uh, the phone's sitting there, so I don't oh, think so. Okay. <laughs> Water break. Everyone has water you can drink. <laughs> I have not. I think I've had like a quarter cup of water today. It's so bad. I'm from Generation X. We don't drink water. <laughs> <laughs> Do, can we have two motions open at the same time? Can we move on to the next discussion and then go back to vote on that one when she gets back? Since it's already almost a two hour meeting. Only if you table the previous one to come back and pick it up off the table. Will that work? So we need a motion to table the previous yeah, probably no. to current motion. With the effort. <laughs> Did you get more um, like private areas over here with the things that are going around? Because I don't think I've ever noticed those That's before. That's for summer reading. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can move everything around. Ah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, where did those come range. from? What yeah. was that talk to? <laughs> yeah, you know, we just, they just look different, that, that's all. Oh, okay. Um, I was like confused on that when we walked in. Yeah, we, we can often get about, you know, 100 or so people, sure. and that's the only space that can can handle um, that group. We would never be able to fit them in the meeting room four, one, two, and three, so... Sense. You had an in interesting program here early yesterday afternoon. I know. Yeah, the Mad Science. Yeah, who, who yeah. was that? Yeah, that was called Mad yeah. Science Milwaukee. Okay. Yeah, yeah you were there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we had those for Girl Scouts, so they're pretty fun. <laughs> mm -hmm. They like to blow things up. And you guys, Haley's, nice Haley's having her bridging ceremony in August. She's going from a oh, daisy to a brownie. That's oh. a big thing. Is she going to camp? She's not. not oh, you should send her through the Sun Lakes camp. Do I'll they, be there. Are you? Do they with my nursing students. <laughs> do they require at the Sun Lake one that the parents have need to volunteer? No. N not that sounds bad when I say it out loud. Yeah. It was just like trying to figure out how I could take vacation because she wants to go to camp. I, re I next year I'm committed. You should to really look at it. Yeah, they do. 
Um, <coughs> Beth Hahn is the person in is the um, camp director. Yeah. She has been doing it for the last 20 years. She doesn't have any kids in scouts or anything. Yeah. And the way that she has developed it, the girls that have been going through the program now sort of almost run it That's with amazing. her. So like every year she has seniors graduating with at least they, it, the big thing is at your 18th year you get a, cha a camp chair with your name on the back of it Aww. and there's always 20 some girls that's graduating that year that stayed in Girl Scouts for 15 years. So impressive. Yeah. Yeah. Are we ready to vote on the operating budget yes. motion? Alright, all those in favor? Please say aye. 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 All those against? Aye. Motion passes. All right, last item of the night, the discussion and action um, to approve the bean stack contract. Can I get a motion to approve the contract as presented in our library packet? So moved. I will second. Thank you both. Any questions or discussion on the bean stack contract? That was pretty straightforward. Did you have any comments? Or no. Anything? Okay. That, that's what it is. Oh, we don't have a vote. vote. They won't pay for it anymore. But. No. <laughs> All right. All those in favor of approving as presented. The Beanstack contract as presented. Please say aye. 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 All those again? Aye. All right. Motion passes. Any communications and miscellaneous business is authorized by law? Nothing else. I'll be out the next three days. So um, for you. enjoy. Well. <laughs> My son's having surgery. It's just minor surgery, adenoids and tonsils. But um, my nephew just had his health. Did he? Mm -hmm. Only tell me good things. I told Alderman Decker. It's I just good. lied to me. Are you at it was good. Yes. Doctor Doctor Sullivan. Oh, she's great. Yeah. I love she's, her. She seems good. good. Maybe I'll come down and see you. I'll be at work tomorrow. We'll be there at 8.15 a.m. Okay. Signing in. Hopefully he's not watching. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. My son just my son just had his tonsils out like two weeks ago. Did he? But he was seventeen. So oh, yeah. Don't tell me. I, I know it's better. Don't really you know what? The, the thing that he completely recommended and now I have brought two children to say we need this in our stock is this gel thing that you put around your head. Mm. And so because what happens with the kids is their ear like the it um the pain radiates to their ears and stuff. Yeah. So it's twelve dollars at Walgreens. Okay. And it's just this gel thing that you put in your um, uh, freezer, and it's like mobile, so that you can just put it on your head. Okay. It was, it was a godsend. It was a godsend. Gel thing. Mm -hmm. I can send you the picture. He, because my son sent me the picture and said I need this. I'll make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> there you yes. go. Anybody <laughs> second it? I'll second. All right. <laughs> All those in favor. Aye. 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 All those again. Aye. Motion passes. Meeting is over at <laughs> six forty-eight. <laughs>